The Labour Friends of Palestine are due to run an event at Labour Party conference this evening. And appearing at it is Hussam Zomlot, Palestine's ambassador to the UK. Originally, David Lammy was also meant to be in attendance. He's Labour's shadow foreign secretary. He's, however, since pulled out. Now, that event comes after Zomlot disclosed how he lost six family members as Israel retaliated to the surprise attack by Hamas on Saturday. Speaking to Foreign Secretary James Cleverly this morning, Sky's Kay Burley asked if it was appropriate for Mr. Lammy to attend at the same event as Mr. Zomlot. What about your opposite number, David Lammy, sharing a platform uh, with the uh, Palestinian um, ambassador who um, basically said the Israelis had it coming? Well, th th those comments, the idea that somehow the... the Would you share a platform with him? No, I wouldn't. Uh, I've met with him, I speak with him. Um, maintaining uh, diplomatic relations is important. Um, but the, the point that I've made, and I've made this directly to representatives of the uh, Palestinian Authority, and it's worth remembering, of course, the Palestinian Authority on the, on the West Bank is a, is a separate organisation to Hamas uh, in, in, in Gaza. So it's important we recognise that. But I have said that, um, that, that, that Palestinian voices, particularly those in leadership positions, should criticise the appalling behaviour the, the atrocious actions that have been perpetrated by uh, Hamas, these indiscriminate killings, these, these murders, these kidnaps, these terrorist uh, actions uh, should be condemned by the leadership of the Palestinian Authority because otherwise there will be this perception that all Palestinians support uh, Hamas and they don't and that all Palestinians support this action and I know that they don't. That is an extraordinary clip because James Cleverly is transmitting more information than the journalist, right? He's saying Hamas and the PLO are different people, they have different views, actually they disagree about a great deal. So who basically said the Israelis had it coming? Uh, Kay, you're the journalist, as well as uh, Mr. Cleverly giving facts that you can't, you also can't just attribute quotes like that if you're paraphrasing. It's deeply unprofessional. We'll discuss where those comments apparently came from in a moment. But before we do, let's turn to uh, Kay Burley speaking to another member of the Shadow Front Bench team. That was from this morning with Pat McFadden. Will the Shadow Foreign Secretary sit with the Palestinian ambassador appearing with him um, at an event, um, given that the Palestinian ambassador basically said um, the last couple of days that Israel had it coming? I can only tell you about my conference diary, Kay, where I will be joining the Labour Friends of Israel tonight, uh, individual at the conference. Uh, we stood in silence, in solidarity with the people of Israel yesterday uh, at the conference. And our position on this is very, very clear. Uh, this was a completely unwarranted attack uh, to which Israel, Israel has the right to respond, uh, to defend itself, to retrieve its people, uh, and to use force to do so. Yeah, however, my question remains, I think it's a, a reasonable one. The shadow foreign secretary sitting with the Palestinian ambassador to the United Kingdom, who says that basically Israel had it coming. Your party has gone to great lengths to try to mend the fractures, uh, fractures I should say, um, as far as the Israeli community is concerned. And then your shadow foreign secretary sits with a guy who says they had it coming. Well, they did not have it coming. So, Kay Burley there is saying, Mr. Zumlot is stating the Israelis had it coming. She said it now to more than one politician. But that wasn't the end of Burley's badgering. Is it appropriate that the Shadow Foreign Secretary sits with a man who said what he said? This is a, an atrocious comment by the uh, Palestinian ambassador to the UK, who has been on the programme many times. I have no uh, personal animosity towards him at all. However, saying something like that and then somebody who would like to be our next foreign secretary shares a platform with him. Lots of my viewers watching this morning would think that that is totally unacceptable. You're not going to answer my question, so let me put it in a different way. If David Lammy does share a stage with the Palestinian ambassador to the UK, should he be disciplined? What isn't clear is the shadow foreign secretary, if he shares a stage 
with the Palestinian ambassador to the UK tonight, should he take the opportunity then to criticise him for the comments that he made, which basically were suggesting that um, bloodshed of Israelis, innocent Israelis, civilians in Israel, uh, was um, a byproduct of um, trying to uh, find a two-state solution, for want of a better way of putting it. So Kay Burley repeatedly puts a phrase to Pat McFadden, asking if his colleague finds it acceptable, without actually quoting what he said. She uses the word basically suggesting. She calls the comment atrocious, but she can't actually say what the comment was. Haven't heard before? I, I can't tell you. Sorry. Well, you're the journalist making these demands, it should be said. She's making demands of the shadow front bench and of the shadow foreign secretary for this atrocious comment. She doesn't know what it was. She can't tell you. And next up for Burley was Labour's Stella Creasy. Where are we with the foreign secretary, the shadow foreign secretary at the moment, um, sharing a stage with a man who has said uh, Israel had it coming? Uh, let's start with you, Stella. I'm not aware of the incident that you're talking about. I know that the Labour Party is absolutely united in condemning the violence, horrified by what we have seen, uh, desperately concerned about those still missing in Israel and Gaza, and also determined that the leadership of both Israel and Palestine needs to come together and show restraint, but also uh, look at what we can finally do to resolve the issues. But I haven't any indication other than that the Labour Party is absolutely united in its condemnation of this horrific violence that we're seeing. I mean, your previous report said it all, really. Uh, given that, uh, Bell, should the Shadow Foreign Secretary be sharing the stage with a man who said, um, the, uh, the Palestinian ambassador to the UK, who said that Israel had it coming? Um, as Stella said, I have, I have no idea as to whether or not uh, this, this is actually going to happen. Um, and I'm not clear under the circumstances under which, under which he would. Um, but I think especially probably speak to, to David Lamy about that. Here we've got multiple things here. Who said, who basically said, suggesting that. She said this now to four different politicians from two different parties. She still hasn't said the actual quote. So where did it come from, this apparent atrocious quote. After all, an anchor on Sky News is repeatedly raising it and using it as a line of attack against multiple opposition MPs. Well, we did some digging here at Navarra Media. It's what we do best. And it appears to come from this interview between Christine Amanpour and Mr. Zomlot on Saturday evening. First and foremost, do you condemn what Hamas did inside Israel to Israeli civilians? First there are dead and there are hostages. First and foremost, the Western media most really abandoned this framework that has gotten us to where we are today. Okay, but I just want to know, it do is, you support is, the killing is, of civilians? Is, is, of course not, of course okay. not, of course not. So do you condemn not. that? The, uh, the loss of civilian life is tragic in all sides. And what is happening is extremely worrying and very tragic. And uh, as we speak, the loss of lives, you've counted 70 Israeli deaths. There is more than 200 Palestinian deaths so far, more than 1,600. Entire, entire residential compounds are being wiped out. This is a war crime committed by Israel. What is more tragic, or equally tragic, is the blindness and the deafness of the world and the international community for so many years. Of the warnings we have been saying that this was coming. Israel knew that this was coming their, their, their way. Israel knew this was coming their way. That is categorically different to saying Israel had it coming, particularly after Zomlot has just condemned moments earlier what has happened and referred to both sides and, and, and the events of the last week as worrying and, quote, very tragic. Did Miss Burley even watch this clip? Does she even know where he apparently said this atrocious thing, which she spent all morning talking to politicians about? Or was it just conjured out of nowhere by some researcher who didn't actually check what they were watching. Well, let's go back to that clip because it really underscores how Mr. Zomlot is a sensible man committed to peace through a political process. We, the National Movement of Palestine, the PLO, have found a different path 30 years ago. We have committed to what the world asks us, recognize Israel, commit to negotiations on nonviolence, and to international legitimacy and resolution. Israel was expected to do one thing only, 
roll back its occupation, stop its colonial settlement expansion. Not one day it did so, killing the, prospect, the prospects of a two-state solution. And the world was expected to do one thing, Christian, uphold international law equally on everybody, on Ukraine, on Palestine, and the world fails to do that. So now no what? accountability. Now, every single political avenue is blocked. Every single legal avenue for us is blocked, like the ICJ, the International Court of Justice. You've heard what the U.S. said, yeah, or the yeah, U.K. Yeah, but, said. But I want to know what happens so, now. What happens now? It's There's a, a consequence. war that a Israel has declared after Palestinian militants, who are, I don't think your friends, Hamas is not a supporter of the Palestinian Authority. There's a war... And you, as you say, there's going to be a massive escalation. There, there is a war. You see, we're having this conversation because Israelis have seen what they have seen today. But my people see this every day, every single day. Palestinians are targeted, killed, arrested, rounded. Their land is confiscated. Their holy places are desecrated. Not only Muslims, but Christians. You have been following what is happening in the Al-Aqsa Mosque and in our uh, uh, Christian uh, churches, the spitting on uh, Christian worshippers. Our people have been seeing apartheid being enforced on them over the last years, and the land is being taken, and the hope for a political solution that will fulfill their rights dissipating. And therefore, this is what we need to discuss. Crazy, right? Sky News versus CNN. Who do you think is doing journalism better? Michael, what does it say about the British media, particularly Sky News, that they think they can lie and misrepresent somebody so easily um, in this regard? I think it's completely disgusting. I think Kay Burley's behaviour all morning was completely disgusting. I said this on Twitter. What it reminds me of is, is a child in a playground who is going up to someone and said, oh, they said you're ugly. What do you think? What do you say back to them? And then they get them to say something nasty. It's made up, right? And, and you were trying to confect a controversy out of nothing and about something so important, right? There are lives at stake. Israel knew this was coming their way. What does that mean? That means this could have been predicted, right? We have been saying that if Israel keeps oppressing people, giving them no opportunity to sort of uh, pursue any kind of peaceful process, then you will see things like this happen, right? He said they could have seen this coming and it's very regretful that they didn't, right? They had it coming has a very specific meaning. They had it coming means they deserve it. They could have seen this coming does not mean they deserve it. It means this was avoidable. This is tragic. And so for Kay Burley to be standing there and just making up this lie, and uh, what's really disgraceful about it, right? She, she's, she's lying about a human being and a human being who we know um, from a previous story we did on this show has, has lost six members of his extended family in the previous 24 hours. But also she is lying about an entire people because this person is the ambassador of Palestine, the UK. So when people are watching that, you know, uh, audience members watching that thinking, really the ambassador for, of Palestine to the UK said, the Israelis deserved it. The Israelis had it coming. What is that person going to think about uh, the, the Palestinian people? You know, well, it doesn't sound like they're a very serious people if their ambassador to the UK said Israel had it coming. So she's not just lying about an individual. She's lying about a whole people. And she is trying to confect a controversy where there is none. And I just think it's completely, completely despicable. It is despicable. And you're absolutely right. There's a slander, not just on him. And by the way, I think this, this seems to me like a case of libel. I don't know. It's for a lawyer to judge, but it does seem like a pretty open and shut case. Uh, it's not just a slander on him. It's a slander on an entire people. And it should be said, Mr. Zumlot is a very good advertisement for the Palestinian people. That He's very calm. Um, he's very moderate, you know, uh, very intelligent and very thoughtful. Uh, the complete opposite of too many people in Britain's media. This bizarre story of fake news and misrepresentation didn't end there, because my colleague here at Navarra Media, Michael Walker, pointed this all out on Twitter to Kay Burley. He said this, This is really a terrible journalism from Kay Burley and reminiscent of a playground shit-stirrer. You can't just make up provocative quotes and then demand others respond to them. That's exactly what she was doing. It's also especially cowardly, as uh, Mr. Zomlot is exceptional at shutting down this kind of thing when he's being interviewed. It's easier to misrepresent him when he's not there. But then things got really weird as Kay Burley responded with this. Don't message me, Michael. I have no interest in anything you have to say. Then Burley proceeded to write this reply to my other colleague, Ash Sarkar. As you can see here, Ash has written, this is an extraordinary response to a fellow journalist pointing out that you appear to have fabricated a quote from the Palestinian ambassador. She had fabricated a quote. Kay Burley responds with this. Do you not have anything else to do in your Navarra Media office? Off you pop. Well, actually, it turns out 
No, we don't have anything else to do, Kay. That's why we're making this video, exposing your terrible journalism and lies. Strange. Then Kay Burley finally went on to write this about me. So as you can see, I've written here, this is an extraordinary lie of a diplomat and unprofessional in the extreme Kay Burley, utterly shameful, which it is. It completely tarnishes the reputation of British journalism that this even appears and nobody says a peep other than us here at Navarra Media. Kay Burley, stop including me in your messages, Aaron. Thanks. Does she even know what Twitter is? Messages? Eventually, Burley explained this bizarre series of responses to her being called out for making a quote up. Kay Burley, I'm on the train to Liverpool and a bit bored. Have a great day. Very serious stuff there from Sky's most prominent female journalist, I think. Now Adam Bolton's left, the most prominent journalist there. Most puzzling of all is that Burley seems to be demanding Labour don't share a platform with Zumlot when she herself has provided him with a platform on Sky News repeatedly. Here is the Palestinian ambassador appearing on the channel as recently as July this year. The, the US has been really um, rather uh, uh, holding uh, the Palestinian uh, case and issue to one standard and the rest of the world to another standard for a long time. So is the West, by the way. Okay, and it's very unfortunate because international rules and international law is very clear. The US and the rest of the world should really think about these kids that were killed in the last uh, 48 hours. It's crazy. Michael, as I said at the top of this story, David Lammy was meant to be at this event, Labour Friends of Palestine event. He then pulled out. I mean, one can assume he but I think, as, as I understand it, they've not condemned him or anything right now. They're just saying he couldn't make it. You know, it's just trying to avoid any sort of PR problems which you might not agree with, but it's understandable. But I think that's probably a direct consequence of these lies and this misrepresentation from Kay Burley, isn't it? Because this doesn't seem to me like journalism. It seems to me like political campaigning. It's just trying to make a story where it's not there. It's trying to concoct a story, but with massive political consequences. Yeah. Because right? obviously what she wanted to do was to have a sort of Labour politician say, oh, da you know, David Lammy shouldn't speak with this terrible guy. She, she basically wanted the politicians to repeat what she was saying, right? Because then it's, you, you've created a fact Right, because then you have a story. Oh, James cleverly condemns Palestinian ambassador for saying the Israelis had it coming to them. You're, you're trying to concoct a story out of nothing by putting someone on the spot and you know with something that's not true. Like it, it it's incredibly unfair. I would like to see. I, I hope we see an on-screen apology for this. I hope he sues her. I mean, I, I think for anybody who cares about this stuff, please make a, a complaint to Ofcom. Um, people love to say GB News or Navarra Media. You know, the newer outlets. The, how terrible. This is a prime example of unprofessionalism. And the fact that it's being said by somebody who's been in the game for decades, decades and decades. She's been there right from the start of Sky News, I think in what, the early 90s? 30 years, bizarre. And the response as well, just, I'm incredulous. That's why, of course, you should support good media with integrity, people-powered media that tell you the facts as they are, just like us here at Navarra Media.